I don't know what you were up to on Friday. Me, I was eating some chippy chips, bread and butter and some scampi in Norfolk on my holidays. And to you, I return today. Unbeknownst to me, though, on Friday, the last day of my holiday, and perhaps even to many of you, a bloke called Wiley, often referred to as the godfather of grime, a very successful musician from East London who's been awarded an MBE for his services to music, was beginning a stream of foul anti-Semitism on social media, specifically Twitter. Some of his now-removed tweets read like they're straight out of the Hitler playbook of 1930s Nazi Germany, the regime this country so bravely went into battle and defeated. Let me give you a flavour of them if you haven't had a look at these messages. Jewish people are cowards. Do something to me, I'm waiting. Jewish people act rough, but they hide behind the police. Who writes the laws? Who changes the laws? Who implements new laws? Who? What is the five percenters? Who are they all? Who runs the world? Who runs the banks? Who writes the law book? Who hides behind the police? Who owns the police? That was Wiley tweeting about Jews. I caught up with these messages last night, 48 hours later, when I started to think about work this week and catch up on the news agenda. Those words burn. I'm sure I don't need to tell most of you that, but just in case I do, they burn deep and they're deeply dispiriting and they play on a very well-hidden fear a lot of Jewish people have that someday anti-Semitism will rise up once more. Because anti-Semitism is fresh and so raw for us. To tell you this, to take you into my life, my grandmother escaped the Nazis from Wiener Neustadt in Austria and found sanctuary as a housemaid in this country. My husband's grandmother survived unspeakable torture in Auschwitz, in Europe, a two-hour flight from here. I've been there. He can't go. He can't bear it. These were our grandmothers who read us bedtime stories safe in our beds in this country. This happened to them in their lifetime, people I met and loved. Only two weeks ago, a week before I went away, I opened Twitter on my phone. What did I see? I saw Jewish privilege trending. Do you know how that feels? Do you know how frightening that is? How angering that is? I've had my fair share of abuse online, much of it sexist and politically charged. It's all out there. You can go and have a look. You may have contributed to it. You may have fought against it. Thank you. But the one bit of abuse that always stops me in my tracks and makes me feel angry, sad and burned, to use that word again, is when I get anti-Semitic abuse. Why are we talking about this today then, 48 hours on from what Wiley did? Well, there's a walkout of Twitter by thousands of people around the world under the hashtag no safe space for Jew hate. It started at nine o'clock an hour or so ago and will go on for 48 hours. And while there is a very important point to be discussed around the role of unregulated social media platforms to act swiftly and remove racist messages, something Twitter didn't do quickly in this instance, and we're going to come on to that. Wiley's also been banned from that platform and Instagram for a week, something else must not be missed. Why is a 41-year-old bloke from enlightened Britain attacking Jews on a random Friday? And he's not alone. So I say this to you, Wiley, if you're listening, because you can't tweet right now, you can't post on Instagram, you might be on a different platform, but if you're listening to Five Live now, and I'm on here for three hours most days just in case you need something clarifying. And I'll say it really slowly and really clearly. Jews don't run the law. Jews don't run the banks. Jews don't run, as you put it, the world. I hate to disappoint you and anyone else who got your anti-Semitic memo, but it ain't true. A man who enjoys huge success, has legions of fans, I want to know, Where did he get that anti-Semitic memo from? Where did he get those messages from? I'm not interested in apologies. I'm not interested in him coming back on Twitter. I'm not interested in what he's going to do in his next album where maybe he's going to find himself or anyone else who's been through this process. I'm actually interested in where did it come from and curing society of such racism. 
But can we? Or do we always have to just accept that certain people, even those with the benefit of wealth and success and advisors, I mean, he has managers, he has people around him, even those with thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers, millions in some people's cases, will always be deeply prejudiced. 